Hello, this is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2013 Essentials, and this is the additional exercise for Chapter 14. In this exercise, we're going to continue the design of the storm system. So, in the previous exercises, you developed the storm system for the northern part of Jordan Court, and now we're going to look at the remainder of the roads, Madison Lane and Logan Court, and the rest of Jordan Court and uh, creating inlets and pipes for, for that part of the system. And we basically have two isolated systems. We have this front area that drains out to the road and then we have this back section that's going to drain to, through, uh, through a drainage easement here ultimately into the stream or possibly into a uh, detention area. So we've got a list of parameters that we need to adhere to. Um, the first one says that all pipes should lead to the south inlet at station 17 plus 17.34. That's right here, this one. So everything's going to funnel into this location. This is the low point. And then there's going to be a 36 inch pipe that goes from that inlet through the drainage easement into the, uh, into the open area back here. So I'm going to start by creating the inlets um, in a way to match what we've done in previous chapters. So to get started, I'll go to the Home tab of the ribbon and we'll say Pipe Network, Pipe Network Creation Tools. We're going to create a new network. I'm going to call it Storm 2. Make sure our parts list is set to Storm Sewer. Our surface will be the road finished ground. And for now, let's do uh, inlets along Jordan Court. So that's the stationing. Most of our pipes and structures, or let's say half of them, are going to reference Jordan Court. So that's what we'll set as the alignment that's default for this pipe network but as you learned in previous chapter or previous parts of this chapter you can assign uh, an, a different alignment to any pipe or structure anytime you want so I'll click OK that brings up my toolbar and I'm going to put that over here and I'm going to set this to curb inlet and then choose the structures only tool and I'm just going to place structures at the centers of these circles. All right, so these are just going to be inlets. Not going to worry about their rotation for now. We'll fix them in a moment. Now, these inlets will reference the Jordan Court alignment, even though they're along Madison Lane. No problem we can change them later on. And I think that takes care of all of the inlets. And If I missed any, we can add them later. So now that the inlets are in place, I'm going to spend a little time getting them oriented properly. And one of the nice things about having the inlets across the road from each other is that you can uh, you can leverage the grips and align them pretty quickly, just like this. Now, obviously, if they're not perpendicular to each other, that little trick's not going to work. But a lot of times they are, so it works out very nicely. Now I'm pretty sure we're going to need some manholes as well, but we really don't know where those are going to be just yet. So we're going to ignore them for now. And just start with the inlets. Okay, so that gets the inlets in place, and now they're all oriented perpendicular to the road. What I'll do now is begin connecting these inlets with pipes. So if you remember, our uh, one of our parameters was that the pipes furthest upstream should be 15 inches. So I'm going to set my default pipe size or my current pipe size to 15 inches. 
and I'm going to use the pipes only command and I'm just going to play a little game of connect the dots here I'm watching for the glyph which tells me the, the little yellow symbol that tells me that the pipe is connecting to the structure and we'll say that's a 15 inch pipe and also this one now without a hydraulic analysis we don't really know if 15 is an adequate size for that we're going to assume that it is and that now we have to jump to 18 inch so we're going to make some assumptions about the pipe sizes we need here that's okay for our purposes I'm going to switch this to 24 inch again when you do this you can choose whatever pipe sizes you want just make sure that uh, as you work downstream that the pipes get larger can't flow from a larger pipe into a smaller one now I'm going to skip right across to this one and then across the road with a 30 inch pipe and then I'm going to change my structure to a head wall for a 36 inch pipe and change my pipe size to 36 inches and I'll jump right across here and provide my 36 inch pipe with the end wall. Now what I forgot to do was to choose the pipes and structures command so now I'm going to go to structures only and uh, and drop that structure. Now what I did is I, I clicked off of it a little bit so I kind of missed the end of the pipe. No problem I'm going to say connect part. I'm going to connect it to that part right there. You saw the pipe move over and now I can take the, uh, the structure and move it as well. So I'm kind of centered through that, that easement a little better. Alright, so now we've got uh, this little guy to worry about. Well, since this is an upstream leg, this pipe right here can be 15 inches. So I'm going to change my pipe size back to 15 inches. And I'll use the pipes only command. And just connect from there to there. And again, the reason this pipe can be just 15 inches is because the water that's entering that pipe is only being collected by one inlet. Whereas this, this pipe here is conveying the flow of several inlets upstream. Um, so it's going to be uh, seeing a lot more flow, probably. So that takes care of the connections of the pipes. And uh, we'll move on to the next step, which is adding some manholes. So to do that, I'm going to change my structure to a cylindrical junction structure storm manhole. And I'll switch this to structures only. And I see two spots that are kind of glaring that I need, I'm cutting right through, you know, probably right under someone's house, that I need to bend the pipe run and, and get it in the right of way. And a third one right here looks like I need one here as well. So what I'll do is just drop a manhole about, about right there. I'll drop a manhole about right here. I can move it around once it's in and I'll also put one here. And then I can click that manhole, move it inward. Again, we're trying to get that pipe into the right-of-way. So if I need to sneak it out onto the road a little bit, that's usually okay. It's better to have the pipe on the road than to have it crossing uh, within somebody's property. For this one we can maybe pull that out there. That's looking pretty good. And for this guy we'll pull it over here. And we can probably move that one out to the right-of-way. No, we still have a little bit of a problem right there. So I think we're just going to place this one out in the road and that takes care of keeping all the pipes in the right-of-way. And then the last thing we need to do is to show all of these pipes and structures in their respective profile. So I'll start with Jordan Court and since these are right across from each other I'm just gonna pick one of them. So I'll pick that structure, that pipe, that manhole, working on down the line and I'll stop with that uh, with that structure right there and I'll say draw parts in profile 
find my Jordan court profile view, which is this one. So there we have those uh, pipes and structures. Next I'll do Madison Lane. So for Madison Lane I'll do this structure, this pipe, this manhole. Working our way down this structure right here. Again, draw in profile. This time I'll pick the Madison Lane profile. You can see we've already got some sanitary shown in that profile. And then finally Logan Court. We'll choose this one, this one, and this manhole. And that takes care of showing the pipes and structures in profile view. And that satisfies all of the requirements for our additional exercise and uh, completes all of our tasks for uh, the additional exercise of Chapter 14.